to help seniors, people with disabilities, people who are living in SROs transition into better housing is that those agencies, TNDC, Caritas, anyone who has a contract with the city and county of San Francisco who builds new housing will move people from those SROs into these new units. We have that legis we have that language in a contract that we see with Trinity Plaza and San Giacomo when he moved with Supervisor Chris Daly, who has endorsed James Keyes, by the way. Okay, move these people from Trinity into their brand new apartment buildings at the same price. Chris State has also made sure that on Treasure Island, those people who are living on the island will get a brand new condo at the same price. We have the language. We are just going to turn that language into legislation. And that is my plan. When you put James Keyes into office, you living in those SROs, you seniors, you people with disabilities will be moved. And that housing, when freed up, we will refurbish it, utilizing some of the great work done on the Planning Commission, and then move people from the streets into those SROs with wraparound services from the mental health board that we get money from Prop 63, and that is my plan. Thank you. Well, I think first of all, like James Key said, we need to make sure that we're funding services. So it's not just about housing, right? So we not only do we have to make sure that we're housing seniors and our families, but we're also providing services to those seniors and families once they are housed to transition them in. Once they are, we've got to make sure that we're protecting tenant rights and, and strengthening a lot of tenant protections. We have to decrease tenancy, uh, the, uh, getting tenancy from 32, 31 days, I think it is now, to what the state is, which is 28 days, um, to make sure that people are establishing tenancy earlier and not getting moved around like they were in the past and making sure the city attorney's office is enforcing when landlords are moving families and seniors around to make sure they don't establish tenancy. Uh, we need to pass another affordable housing bond in the city. Um, the last one we passed was in 1996. Um, we were able to build and rehabilitate close to 2,000 units for the formerly homeless, for seniors, for families, and that money has since run out. We need to make sure that we are actually paying in and investing in, in, in housing. And then third, what I have to say is that we want to make sure that our streets are cleaner and safer. That is a major issue in terms of quality of life for our seniors and families. One project that I worked with another candidate, Elaine Zamora, is developing safe passages for our kids. And we recruited our public high school students to volunteer and walk the kids from schools like Tenderloin and Bessie to their after school programs and develop maps and routes. And ask the business owners and the after school programs to watch out for uh, the streets, uh, for the kids on the streets and work with SFPD to make sure that they're focusing foot patrol in those areas. So I think uh, quality of life in our neighborhoods, cleaner, safer streets, making sure we pass another affordable housing bond, and, and, and uh, committing services to families and seniors once they're in the housing are the key. Thank you. Hi, Jim Miko again. You know, I moved here in 1977. My first apartment was a room here in the Tenderloin, Hyde Street between Turk and Eddy. I know what it's like to live in a single room with no kitchen, no bath. It's, there's no dignity whatsoever. We need to move away from the SRO hotel model of housing into the small apartment model of housing. You know, South the Market did this in the aftermath of the 89 earthquake. They changed the planning code with regard to SOMA only, and they allowed developers to begin to build small apartments with cooking facilities and individual bathrooms in each unit in order to provide dignity. Okay. That's where I want to move the housing model when I'm elected. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually agree with many things my fellow candidates said just now, but I think there's a couple of things they, they may have um, uh, uh, either de-emphasized or were left out. One is uh, District 6 right now seems to be the containment zone for all low-income people. We need to move low-income people to different neighborhoods around the city so they can actually experience the great depth and great wealth of the neighborhoods and the facilities and the stores around the city, not just in the Tenderloin. You should not be... Uh, 
uh, contained and only have the option of living in the Tenderloin. You should be able to live in the Richmond. You should be able to live in the Sunset. You should be able to live any place in this city. We need to take the affordable housing uh, and particularly low-cost housing and take it other parts of the city, uh, not just a Tenderloin. Secondly, we need to increase housing for seniors and for families. Uh, in the Tenderloin, uh, there's a greater, greater percent of immigrant families every single year. It's one of the few places in the city right now that's affordable for an immigrant family to live. We need to increase that, and we need to move these families out of one rooms into small apartments that are able to to, to, to give a, 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 a reasonable lifestyle to the children. And, and seniors, we need to not only have safe buildings and accessible buildings, but we also need to have accessible uh, uh, retail spaces that are affordable within the neighborhood, such as a major grocery store in the Tenderloin, so that these people can actually uh, not spend all of their money on, on high-priced foods at some of these corner stores. Thank you. Deborah Walker again. So I was uh, talking with uh, some folks that live in the Rose Hotel who told me the story that many probably experienced that they've been in SROs for years on lists waiting to get into apartments. But in fact, folks uh, from the Mayor's Care Not Cash program get bumped ahead of them into actual apartments. We need to stop this, this isn't fair. We need to make sure that the services that we deliver are delivered and coordinated better than this. Um, we have some really good organizations who have a, a, a history and a success at like a, the um, Community Housing Partnership of taking these models, these adaptive reuse potentials, and using being able to do the tenant improvement to allow the change of use into group housing and family housing and the next step in trying to, you know, increase the habitability and the, the positive effect of where we live. Um, I think that it's time to actually do an SRO task force that looks at how we're going to be doing these. There's a lot of projects coming forward that are applying for new SRO status. A concern I have is there's no, there's no limit on what anyone can charge for these rooms. Uh, there's no requirement of of the services necessary, the wraparound services that are, we are finding so effective, you know, at getting folks out of homelessness and into homes, uh, we need to get the funding. And currently, we have no no uh, housing bond money. Uh, we are failing at getting the federal government government to prioritize this. And the, the talk about why we have so many homeless in in the cities here, the HUD funding for, for even for rural homeless programs is almost depleted. So in addition to the, the urban programs not being funded at the proper level, the rural programs are totally being cut, and people who used to live out in the smaller cities are now coming into the urban cities. So we have a lot of work to do at all levels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yay.